Hi, I got my comics from Phantom of the Attics for this month, uh, just a couple days ago. So I do post pictures of what I get on Instagram. So this video is really more just like deeper dive and what I call nerd material. And that's not to be disparaging to anybody because I consider myself a nerd too. So some people don't care about that. Some people find it interesting. So here we go. Okay, the first book that I wanna present is this. This is Torches of Freedom number one. This is a self-published book of, by Eric Panokow, I believe it's pronounced. His Instagram handle is Torches of Freedom 8181. And this is something that he self-published. This is an oversized hardcover. And he was in Pittsburgh visiting various comic shops, seeing as some of them would carry his book. So he went to my LCS, Phantom of the Attic, and um, they took on a few copies and Jeff the manager there, um, him and I have been, I've been buying from them for a little over three years. So he messages me, takes a picture of this cover. He says, hey, this, I think this is up your alley. So he, I see a few pics online and I said, sure. So I'm intrigued. So um, I got this book and part of the reason why I got it was I liked the cover, um, but also um, I just thought there was a lot of guts and a lot of chutzpah to make your a self-published book, part one, this oversized hardcover. That was just really cool and I was a sucker for oversized hardcover. So I have to say, this is a really good looking book. I don't know what the story is about. Um, I didn't ask, I haven't done a lot of research. Like I said, this is very um, DIY, but um, whoever you got to print this book did a really fabulous job. I like the paper. It's a glossy paper, but I think it does well with the colors. Uh, I think uh, like this page here, this is something that you would see probably maybe like in a Fantagraphics underground type of um, quality. I just love the use of colors. I love uh, I love these reds and these dark oranges. Reds are really hard color to look appealing um, in my experience, not only for comics, but for like clothes and cars. So um, big fan of this. And I don't, like I said, I don't know what the story's about. I know this is the first volume, there's more, but I just wanted to show it off because I just thought it was really interesting. I thought for like a first self-published comic, it's a really cool idea. Now, I don't know if he did any zines or anything that was smaller, but I think to have something to go out with the stores and give a really nice physical product, I think it's a really smart idea. I know we live, a lot of people like digital comics and all that, but there are people like myself who like um, a tangible book. And I think when you give them a nice physical product, it sticks out and makes a difference. So that's it. Um, I will be reading this in the next few weeks. And um, I'm happy that Jeff recommended this to me. I think it's going to be an interesting read. Next, and let me zoom in a little bit uh, on, for this book. This is Wolverton. This is from PS Art Books. This is a publisher I'm not familiar with at all. The only reason I know about this book is because my friend Colin, who does the Loading the Canon channel, who I'm always talking about, uh, because he's an OG when it comes to comics, especially independent comics. But you know, he's read his share of Marvel and DC Big Two from back in the day. Uh, he does a monthly video on uh, doing going through the previews catalog each month. And he's busy, he's got his hands and a lot of things. So that's the only video that he does currently, but he always picks out something that I miss when I go through previews myself. And so this is something that he mentioned. This is from PS Art Books. It's um, a publisher um, located in Britain. And uh, what they do is they, they take uh, public domain comics, usually like the 30s, 40s, maybe 50s, um, they, with a unifying theme of either a villain, either a type of hero or artist, in this case is Basil Wolverton, and they clean up the images and put them together in this nice package. And sometimes they'll come up with these big hard covers with a slip case. And they're like, in the past, have been like in the, within the $50, $60 range. And they've been really lovely and they sell out quick and they're hard to find, they're expensive in the back market. And then later on, sometimes they'll come out with the large trade paperback called the Softy with two E's. So the reason I got this is because Glenn Head 
who's the cartoonist behind Chartwell Manor in Chicago, um, is a real big fan of Basil Wolverton. Now he talks, he, always, he doesn't really talk about these comics. He talks about the, you know, the pen and ink, black and white drawings that Basil Wolverton is famous for. But also, um, and as a cartoonist by Noah Van Skyver, he actually did a story that was an homage to Space Hawk. And I always see them talking about Basil Wolverton. So one thing that I've always learned is when you find a, an artist or a creator that you really like, find out what they're into and what they like, and then read some of that. And a lot of times that'll open doors to creators that um, you really get into. Um, not always a guarantee, but a lot of times you'll get into them and they'll just make your appreciation and understanding of comics more complete. So uh, I looked at this, and I'll be honest with you, this is actually, a, they did a pretty nice job cleaning this up. Now, I don't know what the original sources are. I'm assuming it's the original comics pages. And, you know, some pages are brighter than others. I mean, the colors look good. This looks like an older comic, but it is an older comic. Most of these stories are either 1940 or 1942. There's a couple at the end that are 1952. And there are some pages that are a little bit more murky, like maybe this, but that might've been just the way they came out back in the day. Um, but I think overall, they did a pretty nice job cleaning this up. I mean, this isn't at the level of the Den reprints that Dark Horse is doing, but like very few books are at that level. Um, but this is actually pretty cleaned up and looks pretty good, better than I thought and better than what I had read online about PS art books as far as what to expect from them. So um, I'm kind of really interested in reading these old time science fiction stories where you didn't, you really didn't need a helmet um, a lot of the time and you had these monsters and it's it just, you know, that, that whole idea, I guess that was like that Flash Gordon inspired type of sci-fi. So I'm um, looking forward to this. This is $32.95 US. If you think you'd be a fan of this, um, you can get it from, you can have your little comic shop order it, or maybe you can get it from PS Art Books. I don't know, but it was in the previous catalog, so I'm sure that it's not hard to find. All right. Next, I got UFO Mushroom Invasion, and let me zoom in a little bit on that. This is the second release in the Smudge imprint by Living the Line, and this is a series of books that they're going to go and revisit horror manga from Japan um, in the heyday, which was the, the, up through the mid 1980s. The first release they had earlier this year was Her Frankenstein, which I really enjoyed. This is the second one. And this, these, all these books are translated by Ryan Holmberg. And my rule of thumb is like, if Ryan Holmberg is gonna translate a book, it's probably gonna be a pretty good book. Um, even if it's just different styles of manga, it's just, there's a, it's good story and good art. So this is, um, this came out like last week and this was published in, originally published in serial or serialized actually 1975, I want to say. So, um, I'm digging this art and I know this was like from 50 years ago almost, but you know, I think the art still slaps and I, and I kind of like this old school approach, um, to some of the art, but it doesn't look super dated. Um, I just love the fact that there's just all this old manga out there that's never been translated and now it's starting to get the uh, translation and the exposure it deserves. So I don't know what's going on in this story. I don't want to show any more, but I just want to show a few pages, but I'm really looking forward to this. I think this is going to be great. And staying on that manga tip, I got Tomorrow the Birds, this is the third of four planned um, translations or volumes, I would say, from a Blaze manga that are translating previously, I mean, work that was not previously translated into English. Um, and they started off earlier this year with a couple, they just, um, I just finished reading Shakespeare Manga Theater, and now this is Tomorrow the Birds. And this, this was serialized I want to say 71 to 72 or 72 to 74. I uh, can't remember right now, but uh, this was this basically the premise of this is that birds have acquired or surpassed the intelligence of human beings and it's just taken over the planet. And I really like this era of Tezuka. Um, I've said it before. I like his work from the 70s and into the 80s. It became more adult and I wouldn't say you know, just because of any kind of like 
R-rated stuff. Um, although there was some of that in a lot of his later books, like um, uh, Oto Kirihoto and M.W., but the themes were a lot more mature, more for grown-ups, I would say. And so um, these collections, they're 1495, over 300 pages. Azumo Tezuka, um, just looking forward to this. I'm a big Tezuka fan and um, glad that these stories are being translated into English uh, after all these years. And um, it's just a great to be able to have this and read it and have this part of my collection. So um, they have one more coming out scheduled currently for November, um, Neo Faust. But um, yes, I, I've noticed that they'll have a publication date and then they'll get delayed like a month or two or two or three months. So it's scheduled for November, it might be December, but these books are great. They're very inexpensive for what you get. And if you're a Tezuka fan, or if you're curious to read some Tezuka that's not Astro Boy and his early stuff, this is good because this is this is not as dark as his 80s stuff, which I personally really enjoy, but it's not lighthearted and Disney-esque like his uh, 60s stuff. It's somewhere in between. And lastly, uh, Paying For It by Chester Brown. Uh, this is the new printing that's done to coincide with the release of the movie of Paying For It. And uh, when I first read Chester Brown, I got a couple issues of Yummy Fur, and I didn't know what the heck I was reading. Um, it, 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 I, I don't know if I can explain the story because I don't know, I don't want to get banned on Instagram, but it was a sh odd story and really didn't do much for me, kind of left me cold. But then later on, I started reading more Chester Brown. I started reading his adaptations of the biblical stories, which I thought were pretty interesting um, as far as that those interpretations. And so I started reading more of his stories. I have a few of his graphic novels. His work, you can get his graphic novels for pretty cheap. Um, and I really started getting into his work. I, I support him on Patreon. It's the best Patreon in the world, by the way. It's a dollar a month, dollar US a month. And you, you'll get like, um, you know, insights in the comics that he's working on. He talked about inking Joe Matt's work on the uh, the most recent issue of uh, Peep Show. Uh, just interesting insights. And then once in a while, he'll send out these little tiny mini comics like this big. So uh, uh, for you can't beat it for a dollar a month. Um, so I've always liked his work. The one, th one thing I've noticed is that his books a lot of times tend to be really small and sometimes drawn on quarterly when they republish some of these books, publish them small. So I don't know if it's a publisher decision or I think ultimately a creator decision, but this is like a manga volume and this is the book. So it's pretty small. And then inside the panels, you know, they've they haven't moved the panels. So it's eight panels per page, that style that he has. So this is kind of small. So I know that my old eyes are gonna take a while to adjust. But um, these, his, I really have gotten to enjoy his work. And there's a lot of like notes in here and pictures and additional comics, um, just a lot of different material. Like I, I was gonna buy this book already, but then when I found out there was a new edition being published, I said, well, let me hold off and get the new edition. So I did. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And that's really it. Um, I've shifted away from floppies for the most part, just the way I want to collect now. And um, I've been looking forward to all of these books. And so far, I think, um, I, I think I've done pretty well. Uh, this book is the, um, the um, what do you call it, the, the wild card, but it looks really beautiful. So I'm really looking forward to reading that and doing a video of it. So that's it. If you guys have any questions or any comments, because I learn a lot from people that comment um, on these books, uh, that would be great. Anyway, have a good night. Thanks.